If you had any doubt, you didn't even have to go through all that. And you should have just asked me about it. What, what do you even mean by that? It means that I was planning to already break up with you. What? Does that mean you want to get a divorce? Yes, that's what I mean. So that's why I always carried around this with me too. Saying that, my husband Frank brought out some papers from his bag. It was the divorce papers. And Frank had already signed his part. My name is Allison. I am 29 years old and I work at a company. It has been two years since I got married to my husband Frank, who was the same age as me. Until recently, I thought I was going to live happily ever after with my husband. But then, I just had to see it. I saw a woman's name, which I have never seen before, floating on the screen of my husband's phone. It happened just when my husband was taking a shower. My husband had been reading a magazine until then and had placed his phone on top of a pile of books on the living room table. My husband has a habit of leaving books he has read untouched, and after a week or so, some of the books would naturally pile up. When I warn him about them, he puts them back on the bookshelf, but he has a tendency to be lazy like that. He left the books out again, huh? At that time, I couldn't be bothered to warn him again, so I tried to put them away for him. And, since my husband's phone was in the way, when I moved the phone onto the table, the screen of the phone came on, and there I saw a notification that he got a text message. I saw a message under the name of a woman named Sarah. And I saw a message from Sarah, which said, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Huh? Who is this? I looked at the screen and froze for a moment. But just then, I heard the door for the shower room open. And I quickly put my husband's phone back in its place. I couldn't even put the books away. My husband came out of the shower room with an unsuspecting look on his face and sat down on the couch. Then, as if he had noticed, he took the phone and looked at the screen. I was glancing at him from the kitchen so as not to be noticed, but my husband was looking at his phone with a little grin on his face. Wow, so he is cheating on me. So, I officially requested an investigator to investigate so that I could get a solid evidence about my husband and his affair. And although I didn't want to believe it, it became crystal clear that my husband was having an intimate relationship with that woman named Sarah. He stayed at Sarah's house on his so-called business trips, and on days when he worked late and came home late, it looked like he went to a hotel with Sarah. I got even more depressed as the evidence of photos came out one after another. I am ashamed to admit that, at that point, I still have feelings for my husband. So, I was willing to forgive my husband if he only cheated on me because he just lost his temptation. I told my husband that I wanted to talk to him when he came home from work and sat him down in a living room. I showed him the photos I received from the investigator and asked him what this was all about. But, shockingly, my husband answered calmly, Whoa! You used an investigator to check on me! Huh? If you had any doubt, you didn't even have to go through all that. And you should have just asked me about it. But what do you even mean by that? It means that I was planning to already break up with you. What? Does that mean you want to get a divorce? Yes, that's what I mean. So, that's why I always carried around this with me too. Saying that, 
My husband Frank brought out some papers from his bag. It was the divorce papers. And Frank had already signed his part. Why did you cheat on me? And you're saying that you want a divorce? Uh, why can't you even understand that? Excuse me? Because, you know, you never got pregnant, Allison. What? I'm not the type of person who's laid back enough to stay with a woman like that if I think about the future. So, I thought it would be better to switch to another woman instead of you. N no way. But we've only been married for two years. In general, there are a lot of couples who goes through a period of time where they won't have kids yet, right? So, I told you already. I'm not that laid-back type. Allison, you weren't trying hard enough. How could you say such a terrible thing? Besides, making a baby isn't something that only the wife has to work hard for. It's something that the couple has to work together for, right? You are responsible for it too, you know. What the hell are you even saying? How can that be? You have to admit that there's something wrong with your body, which is why you can't get pregnant. I mean, it's what my mother says too. This has nothing to do with your mother, Frank. My mother-in-law, Jackie, used to annoy me every time she saw me, asking me if I got pregnant with her grandchild yet. When she said, You must be one hell of a woman who can't get pregnant with a child even after two years. To me, I couldn't believe my years. So, that's why I didn't really like Jackie. My husband defended me every time by saying, Mom, don't be so hard on her. But... It seems that Jackie had recently began to brainwash Frank. My mother also likes Sarah too. So, now, all I have to do is get a divorce with you, Allison. He hey, but wait a minute now. Does that mean that Jackie already knows about you cheating on me? I mean, my mother has already met Sarah a few times. Sarah is five years younger than me, so my mother is happy that Sarah's young and that she has a good chance of being pregnant. I didn't know where to begin anymore. I couldn't believe that a lot of things had already been discussed behind my back. Before I knew it, I had tears flowing down my cheeks. My husband looked at me with disgust. Oh, come on. Don't tell me that you don't want to divorce, okay? I'm already ready to remarry Sarah. Well, I'm going by to my parents' house for a while, so please think positively about divorce. With that, my husband started packing up his belongings. He didn't care at all that I was crying. I became emotionally unstable and spent a couple of days binge eating, vomiting, then binge eating again and then vomiting again. Because of this, I got sick and had to go to the hospital. My head hurt and my stomach felt really heavy. When I went to the hospital to have some tests done, the doctor mentioned that I had not had my period and told me that I might be pregnant. The doctor also said that the nausea which I thought was caused by binge eating and mental shock, could be due to pregnancy. I decided to go to the OBGYN clinic to have it officially checked out, just to be sure. After the test at the clinic, I was told that I was actually pregnant. I had thought that my period came late due to irregular menstruation cycle and the fact that I was mentally ill because of what had happened, but I had no idea that I was really pregnant. When I learned that I was pregnant, I lost all my strength at once. 
I had no idea that I would find out that I was pregnant right after my husband and Jackie treated me as a woman who couldn't get pregnant and even divorced me because of that. Thanks to this happy news, I didn't care about my husband at all anymore. Maybe this is what it means to be a mother. It simply made me realize that I had to be strong for the sake of my baby. So, I should leave that scumbag asshole once and for all. I packed my bags and was ready to leave immediately. I explained the situation to my parents, and they agreed to let me live with them for some time, while I took the maternity leave after the divorce. Then, a week after that divorce talk, my husband came home once. So, have you properly made up your mind for us to get a divorce? My husband said that to me as he looked annoyed. So, I got all my strength together and firmly replied to him. Yes, I'm glad to get rid of a lousy, terrible man like you. Oh, really? Then, please just get the hell out of here. But, before that, you have to promise me something, okay? I took out my voice recorder and pressed the record button. I'll file a claim for alimony for your affair, and to your mistress too. My husband looked at me with disgust as I was recording, but to what I said he replied, Okay, we'll pay the alimony. My husband's family is rather wealthy as his father had already passed away, and he and Jackie had received quite a large inheritance. So, I guess alimony is nothing to them. Are you satisfied then? If so, get the hell out of my house. I'm not done yet. There's one more important thing. Huh? What is it then? I'm pregnant. Excuse me? So, you better pay the child support too, okay? What? You, you really got pregnant? Well, yes. I did get a checkup at the OBGYN clinic. My husband looked really surprised. I guess he was shocked to hear the news. Is it really... M my baby? Of course. Besides, I never had an affair unlike you. Anyway, you have to pay child support and promise me that you will never see my child and Jackie will never see my child either. To that, my husband looked really annoyed but agreed saying, All right then. I was not sure if the recording was enough, so I asked him to write a memorandum. Well, all I have to do is have a baby with Sarah. I was angry that my husband didn't seem to be responding at all about my baby, but at least he has agreed to all my requests, so it was all good. So, like that, our divorce was finalized. I hired a lawyer and had the lawyer communicate about the alimony payment to Frank. Neither my ex-husband nor his mistress seemed to be particularly stubborn about anything and agreed to the payment. Later, I gave birth to a beautiful son and became a single mother. With the help of my parents, I worked hard at my job and spent happy days at home with my son. Then, on one weekend, Jackie suddenly came to my parents' house. What's going on all of a sudden? What is the meaning of this? You never told me you had a child. I want to see my grandchild. Excuse me? Jackie suddenly came charging at me, demanding to see her grandchild. At that point, it had been two years already since I divorced Frank. Why does she suddenly come to me? Now wait a minute. I divorced Frank on the condition that you and Frank wouldn't see my son. That means that you have no right to see my son. Shut the hell up. I don't care about that. I have all the right to see your son because I am related to him. Hurry up and bring out your son. Huh? Bring out? Don't say it that way as if my son is a thing. Oh, that's enough. I'm going to call the police. Don't be stupid and just get the kid. I'm so glad I left the front door chained. If I had opened the door, Jackie would have rushed inside. 
Then after a few minutes, the police car came along. Hey! Hey you! Did you really call the police on me? I can't believe this. Huh? I didn't call them. When I turned around, my mother said, I called the police when she came to our house. Good job, Mom. Jackie was then taken to the police station. I went with her to the police station for questioning. After that whole incident, I received a text message from my ex-husband saying, How could he call the police? And another message which said, Mom just wanted to see her grandson. To that, I replied, Did you forget about what you wrote? Did you forget about the recorded data? If you want anything more from me, you'll have to go through my lawyer. It seemed like Frank read my message, but I never heard back from him again. But then, after that, Frank and Jackie insisted that they had the right to see my son through my lawyer. But, because of the recorded audio as well as what my husband had written on the memorandum, their request was denied. My lawyer showed them the recorded data and the memorandum and told them clearly, You are not allowed to see the child because Frank had agreed to these terms of the divorce. Jackie seemed to jump on my lawyer at any moment and was screaming hysterically. Frank, on the other hand, was trying to cry so hard so that my lawyer would accept the request. My lawyer was also troubled by the fact that Frank had started to talk about his own life story, which my lawyer had not even asked him to talk about. According to the story, Frank's lover, Sarah, could not get pregnant. I don't know the details, but it seems that she experienced on getting pregnant when she was a lot younger and had several abortions and was already in a state where it was difficult for her to get pregnant. Plus, Sarah hid that fact from Frank and married him. After two years of marriage, Sarah got fed up with Jackie constantly asking her if she got pregnant yet, which Jackie did the same with me. And so, Sarah finally revealed the truth to them. Jackie then got furious and told Sarah, Get out, thief my son, and forced her and Frank to get a divorce. And at that time, Frank said, I wish I had never divorced Allison. And when Jackie questioned him about what he meant, he told her for the first time that I was actually pregnant before we got divorced. My ex-husband had kept it a secret from Jackie because he was expecting a child soon after he remarried Sarah. He should have just kept it a secret. But the fact that Frank and Jackie contacted me again was actually a good thing for me. After all, Frank had only paid child support for this first six months or so. So this time, when my lawyer met with them, I asked my lawyer to demand child support payment from them. The moment Frank was told about child support, he suddenly burst into tears and said, No, it's... Ah! I had asked my lawyer in advance to charge Frank mercilessly about the child support payment, so the lawyer strongly urged him to pay. My ex-husband reluctantly agreed, and since then, he has been paying child support again. And because of what had happened, I put a restraining order on Jackie and Frank. They both seemed to be completely freaked out about it, and stopped coming over and also stopped contacting me. For now, this will give me some peace and quiet for a while. A scumbag male like him and his annoying mother had made my life difficult, but I'll just be thankful that I've met my cute son. Isn't it a bit old-fashioned in terms of values to call someone a woman who can't get pregnant after just two years of marriage? And I think getting pregnant with babies or something that comes naturally, not something you can have if you pressure them or stress them out about it. Frank and Allison loved each other, got married, but I can't believe that Frank just switched to another woman just because Allison couldn't get pregnant. I thought, how could such a scumbag man like him get another woman, but that new woman seemed to be quite strange as well. Well, as it turns out, Frank got divorced twice, so it's what he really deserves. 
I hope Allison and her adorable son will make lots of memories and live happily ever after. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video. Well then, I'll go home to my parents' house. That's right. Don't ever come back here. If you're just going to leave, then why don't you just sign these divorce papers? Saying that, my husband Hunter took out the divorce papers from the doors which he had prepared behind my back. I picked them up and signed my part. And then, I went back to my parents' house and told my mother what had happened. Then, a few days later, my husband suddenly came to my parents' house. Hey, what the hell is going on here? Why did I get fired from my company? Well, it's all your fault. You deserve what you got. My name is Carolyn. I am 30 years old and I work in a company. I am now married for two years to my husband, Hunter. Things were going reasonably well at first, but we gradually began to grow apart and we started to have arguments more and more. We first met at a blind date, which was held through a friend of mine. That is when I first met Hunter, who was the same age as me. He kept on talking to me, and gradually, we started to meet up more frequently on our own. Then, we began to officially go out, and we ended up getting married. I was 28 at the time, and I was worried and being impatient about getting married. I think one of the reasons I was worried and impatient was that many people around me had already been married for several years now, and some even had children. I tried not to tell Hunter that I really wanted to get married as soon as possible, so as not to put any weird pressure on him. So, I was really happy when he proposed to me on his own. And there is another reason why I was happy when Hunter had proposed to me and when it was decided that we were getting married. It was because I got to reassure my mother with the news that I was getting married to Hunter. My mother raised me as a single mother all on her own. My father had passed away of illness when I was still very young. So after that, my mother worked very hard to support me and take care of me. And it was all because of my mother. I was able to go to a good college and become an adult properly. I wanted to show my mother how happy I was after I got married to reassure her. When I informed my mother that I was getting married to Hunter, she was very happy. Oh, you're finally getting married, huh, Carolyn? I'm really happy for you, sweetie. Oh, I wonder what I should wear for the wedding. Seeing my mother that happy made me happy too. Then, after meeting up with the, the parents and greeting them and meeting each other's families, the wedding ceremony was held without any issues. Seeing my mother cry when she saw me in my wedding dress, I cried too. Oh, Carolyn, you're so beautiful. Thank you so much, Mom. From now on, please have a happy merry life with Hunter. I will, for sure, Mom. After that, Hunter and I went on our honeymoon, and we began our life as husband and wife. We had a lot of fun and freely enjoyed our times during our honeymoon and the early stages of our newlywed life. My husband and I both worked, but I think we did well sharing the house chores that we were both capable of. When I informed to my mother that we were happily married, she was very happy for both of us. 
I am so glad that you have found your happiness, honey. Well, next, it's your turn, Mom. What? No way, no way. Getting married is not for me. But you're going out with somebody at the moment, right? Yes, but I'm already at this age, you know. What are you talking about? You're still very young, you know. My mother was 52 at the time, and it's only really normal for her to get remarried. I mean, age has nothing to do with love or marriage. Maybe the person who you're with is already thinking about marrying you, Mom. Oh, well, we'll see about that, honey. Or are you playing with him, Mom? Oh, don't say that, honey. I know that's not true. I had found my happiness. So I wanted my mother to have a second life and be happy too. But before I could worry about my mother, something happened with Hunter and I. And it was all triggered by a trivial thing. Huh? You haven't done the laundry yet. What? It's not my turn to do it today, right? No, no, today is your turn, honey. Huh? No way. It's not my turn. Like this, we argued and had a fight for the first time since we got married. Look, see? I even have it written down here. I had written down my share of the house chores on my calendar. And that day was the day my husband was in charge of doing the laundry. When I showed him what I had written down, he turned really red and got angry again. Shut up. That's not even really reliable. What? In any case, I won't be doing it, all right? No way! Since Hunter refused to do the laundry like that, I had no choice but to do the laundry. But I was surprised by my husband's irrational temper. I had never seen my husband lose his temper like this when we were dating or even after we got married. Could it be that my husband's true nature was like this? That's what I began to think. After that, my husband stopped doing his share of the housework. Hey, I'm having a hard time because I'm the only one who has to do all these house chores. Huh? Well, it's none of my business and I couldn't care less. Normally, the wife should be doing the house chores, you know? I mean, you should be thankful that I've been helping out around the house until now. I was so shocked by the huge change in my husband's terrible attitude. At that time, I considered divorcing him. But then, I had found out that I was pregnant in the midst of all this chaos. I was a little nervous about leaving Hunter at the time, as I was pregnant, and we were having a baby. And besides, I thought my husband might change his attitude if we had a baby. And plus, we had only been married for about six months or so at that time. And I thought my mother would be really sad if I divorced so quickly. For these and many other reasons, I decided not to divorce Hunter. When I told my husband that I was pregnant, he was very happy. So I'm going to be a father, huh? Then I have to do my best and work hard, definitely, huh? I was so happy to hear Hunter say these things. Since then, my husband has been taking care of my health and has taken the initiative in doing the house chores frequently. Carolyn, are you okay? If there is anything, please just let me know. Yeah, thank you so much. Apparently, the birth of our baby brought Hunter back to himself, being really kind again. And I finally gave birth to our baby, 
without any issues. A cute little girl was born. Oh, wow. She looks just like an angel. She looks exactly like me. And she's so beautiful. My husband was very happy about our daughter, and I thought we would be a really nice family together. But the reality doesn't always go the way you want it to be. Since this was my first time having a baby, I was just so busy in taking care of my daughter. She cried a lot at night, move around a lot, and it was really hard to keep up with the house chores. But unfortunately, my husband did not appreciate what I did around the house at all. Hunter only cared for our daughter when he was in a good mood and gave the baby to me when she started to cry. He would then complain, Are you sure you're doing your house chores properly? To me, as you can imagine, I couldn't just sit back and take in everything Hunter was saying to me. Taking care of the baby is a lot difficult than you think, you know. And you have no idea how difficult it is to do these house chores on top of taking care of the baby, do you? You haven't helped me much with the house chores at all since our daughter was born. That's because you're at home on maternity leave, so doing the house chores is your job, right? Besides, I'm out working, you know. What? Then what are you going to do when I go back to work? My conditions and yours are the same, you know. Shut the hell up. You're going to put our daughter into daycare so nothing would change. Once you're done with your job and you're back at home, you're the one who's supposed to do all the house chores around the house. Saying that, Hunter went off to his room. I was deeply disappointed in my husband. He was such a selfish person. Maybe Hunter would not change even after our daughter was born. I thought of divorce, but I couldn't really do it because I hadn't been able to return to work yet. And I also didn't want my mother to worry about me. After that, Hunter and I became increasingly distant, and we stopped talking with each other. My husband started coming home late at night and felt as if he didn't want to go back home. And he started going out alone on weekends. But for my part, I am grateful that Hunter did that. Seeing my husband's face made me so angry and irritated, and I was happy to be alone with my daughter and be able to interact with her in a relaxed manner. So I preferred not to have him around at all. Time passed by, and two years passed since we got married. My daughter is now one year old and growing little by little every day. My maternity leave will be over soon and I plan to return to work. But then, something unexpected happened. My husband was having an affair behind my back. I was driving to dinner with my mother and my daughter around the town. Then, I saw my husband in the street, arm in arm, with a woman I didn't know. I was really surprised to see him that way, but strangely, I wasn't in a shock. In fact, I thought it might be a good opportunity for me. I then requested an investigation by a professional investigator. It turned out that my husband had been having an affair behind my back. I immediately questioned my husband about what I had found out. Hey, what is the meaning of this? When I showed him the evidence of the affair, he became upset for a moment, but then became defiant. Oh, so you caught me. Well, it's what it is, you know. I'm dating this cute girl. You've got to be kidding me. You have a daughter too, remember? You really think that you can get away with this? Well, it doesn't matter much anymore. We were already growing apart, and our relationship was broken off anyways. Right? 
I can't believe that you're even acting this way. I thought Hunter would at least apologize to me, but he didn't even try to do that. At this point, my feelings I had for my husband were completely gone. Oh well then, I'll go home to my parents' house. I never want to be in the same space as Hunter anymore. When I said that to my husband, he shrugged his shoulders. That's right. Don't ever come back here. If you're just going to leave, then what are you just sign these divorce papers? Saying that, my husband Hunter took out the divorce papers from the drawers which he had prepared behind my back. He really is a terrible man. I picked them up and signed my part. I packed my things and left the house with my daughter. Before arriving at my parents' house, I went to the town hall and submitted the divorce papers. Then, when I returned to my parents' house, I told my mother what had happened. My mother was surprised at what she heard, but she told me that it was the right thing to do for me to leave my husband because continuing such a merry life would only lead to unhappiness. I then went to my lawyer and filed a claim for alimony against my husband and his mistress. Of course, I also demanded child support from my husband. My husband paid the alimony immediately, but the child support was too much for him to pay it all at once, so I asked him to pay it in installments. But my revenge did not end there. With the help of a certain person, I had my husband punished. A few days later, my husband suddenly came to my parents' house. Hey, what the hell is going on here? What? Why did you come here all of a sudden? Why did I get fired from my company? You did something, didn't you? Oh, you're talking about that, huh? It's all your fault. You deserve what you got. You were just punished for having an affair. No, no, wait a minute. You can't just fire someone for having an affair. Well, that may be true. But I heard that you were having an affair with your colleague, who is way younger than you, and you were both doing all kinds of naughty things in the company, weren't you? You may think that you wouldn't be seen by people, but you can't definitely escape from the security cameras. You were clearly caught on video, committing indecent acts in public. And I also found out that you were sneaking out of the office and skipping work to do those things, which is why you were fired. Huh. How come you have the access to these security camera footages? And why do you, who has nothing to do with the company, have the authority to fire me? It wasn't me who fired you. It was the president of your company. And he is my mother's second husband, who also became my stepfather. What? My mother was a very beautiful woman, and, you know, she made her living by working at a pub all through my childhood. She still worked at that pub, and that's where she first met my stepfather a few years ago. They began to go out, and they were in a relationship for a while, and now... They just recently got married. After finding out about your affair, my mother told my stepfather about what was happening with you and I. And my stepfather had looked into who you were, you know. No, no way! My stepfather said that he doesn't want someone who doesn't do his job and steals the money while doing naughty, terrible things at the company. It was then Hunter finally realized his situation and began to cry. I'm s sorry. Please for forgive me. If I lose my job here, I'm gonna have a hard time making ends meet all at once. I won't even be able to pay my rent. I'll apologize, so can you please get back with me? Hunter pleased to me on his knees. But I knew that he didn't mean what he said. Actually, I believe that Hunter was acting that way because he found out that his ex-company's president was now my stepfather. And knowing that we're wealthy now, he's trying to get back so that he'd have a rich life with me. 
But I no longer have any feelings for my ex-husband. It is impossible for me to get back together with you, Hunter. I will never see you again and you will pay me the child support for my daughter. And that's all I have to say. Now leave before I call the police. As I said this, my ex-husband left in a hurry. After that, my ex-husband was dumped by his mistress and now he is jobless, alone and lonely, trying to pay for the child support. Meanwhile, I have returned to work, moved to an apartment near my office and I am now living happily with my daughter. I will continue to work hard for her and watch her grow up. I was surprised that Carolyn's mom remarried to the president of her ex-husband's company. But I'm glad that the stepfather helped Carolyn to punish her crappy husband. I hope Carolyn continues to have a happy and joyful life with her daughter. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.